On October 19, 2017, a peculiar object was spotted in the sky over Hawaii. Now, that object had an odd shape. It looked as if it were being, quote, propelled away from the sun. A lot of theories about exactly what it was. But some believe the object to be built and flown by extraterrestrial intelligence, including our next guest, professor of science at Harvard University, Dr. Avi Loeb. In his new book, Extraterrestrial, The First Sign of Intelligent Life Beyond Earth, Dr. Loeb dives deeper into this Hawaii incident and more. And he joins us now to discuss. Great to see you, sir. Good to see you, sir. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Mm -hmm. um, can you just break down for our audience what happened, what the object, what some of the characteristics of the object were, and how you came to your conclusions? Yeah, this is the very first object that we noticed near the Earth that came from outside the solar system. And we could tell that because it moved very fast. It was not bound to the sun. And uh, it was discovered by a telescope in Hawaii and given the name Oumuamua, which means a scout in the Hawaiian language. And at first astronomers thought, well, it's probably just like the rocks we have seen within the solar system. It's sort of like walking on the beach. Most of the time you see naturally produced rocks that you've seen before. Uh, but the object did not have any cometary tail. There was no gas trailing it. And uh, it was clear that uh, it's, it's not a comet. And uh, then as it was tumbling, spinning around, uh, it looked as if um, it's at least 10 times longer than it is wide on the sky, uh, projected on the sky. We just see the reflected sunlight from it. And uh, moreover, a flat uh, shape is most likely a pancake shape. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the object was uh, indeed pushed away from the sun by some uh, force. And uh, in addition to its motion as a result of the force of gravity. And uh, the only way to explain that is reflection of sunlight. Uh, just like uh, the wind reflects off a sail and pushes it, you could get a push from reflecting sunlight. It's called a light sail. And uh, nature doesn't make light sails. So that, that led me to suggest that perhaps it's uh, artificial in origin. And uh, just a few months ago, we discovered another object in September 2020 that was pushed away from the sun by reflecting light and uh, also did not have a cometary tail. Turns out that this one was a rocket booster launched in 1966 huh. uh, in, in a lunar lander mission. And so we know that we produced this one. Who produced Oumuamua? We don't know. That's a great question. And, sir, one of the things I found with great interest, both um, in your previous interviews, particularly with our friend Joe Rogan, was talking about the pushback that you've received within your own university and in the scientific community around merely asking this question about the first object that we've ever seen from interstellar space. Could you go into that? Why do you think that there is a pushback within the scientific community about even investigating this object? <laughs> There are several reasons for a pushback. One I can relate to is related to my daughters, you know, that when they were young, they thought they have special qualities. And when they went to the kindergarten, they realized that there are other kids and some of them might be smarter than they are. And, uh, you know, and they would much rather prefer to stay at home and maintain the illusion that, that they are the smartest kid on the block. And so that's a natural tendency of humans to believe that they are special, unique at the center of the universe. You know, since uh, Aristotle, uh, the ancient Greek uh, philosopher, uh, we thought that we are at the center of the universe. And the second thing is uh, there is all this uh, literature on science fiction and UFO reports that uh, s some scientists uh, completely dismiss. And, um, and as a result, they don't want to even go in that direction. But I think that's a big mistake because the public cares a lot about this question and science can address it using the scientific method. Uh, you know, if in the dark ages there were people arguing that the human body has a soul, some magical power, we shouldn't dissect it, we shouldn't have an operation. And then uh, imagine scientists saying, we don't want to deal with the human body because of all this nonsense being said about it. Where would modern medicine be? It's the obligation of science to actually engage in things that people care about. Yeah. And doctor, do you feel like the intense backlash to even floating this, investigating this theory, do you think that that's an isolated incident or do you think oh, it's no. representative of a broader problem within the scientific community? Where does that come from? Why is that happening now? There is definitely a broader problem because uh, one, one reason that it comes out is because uh, 
uh, a lot of people in academia are trying to maintain an image where they make no mistakes, that everything, you know, uh, is uh, shown in a way that would promote their, their image so that they can get honors and awards. And if you take risks, uh, if you get into a controversial discussion, it, it, it could uh, hurt your, your image. And uh, they're playing it safe, not putting any skin to the game, uh, the best way, the best sandbox to work in is the one that is not tested. You know, if you work on things that can never be tested experimentally, uh, then you are secure, you're basically guaranteed uh, uh, not to be proven wrong by experimental data. And so you have whole communities or cultures that developed within the physics community that um, are engaged in very uh, abstract studies that have no contact with experiments. And the public, in principle, does not really care about those subjects either. So I think the culture has to be changed. And I was asked by the Harvard Gazette, you know, the official newspaper of, ha of Harvard University, what is the one thing I would, I would like to change about the world? And my response was, I would like my colleagues to behave more like kids. You know, as kids, mm -hmm. we wonder about the world. We are not afraid of making mistakes. And we, we don't worry about our image so much. And, it's just fun to be engaged in a, a learning experience where you can find something that you haven't expected. Well, Doctor, we really appreciate your work. Uh, we encourage everybody to go buy the book. It's doing very, very well right now, and we appreciate you joining us, sir. Thank you. Congratulations. Great to have you, sir. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Our pleasure. And we'll have more rising for you after this.